In this video, I'm going to show you seven daily habits that could be quietly destroying your blood sugar levels, raising your A1C, raising your fasting blood sugar values, and keeping your body in fat storing mode. Fix them and you will see your blood sugar numbers come down for good. And no, this is not going to be your typical video telling you to stop eating cake, stop drinking soda, or stop eating fast food. We all know those aren't healthy. But what about the little things that you're doing every single day that are feeding the fire of insulin resistance? The root problem of your blood sugar levels without even knowing about it. Stick around and I'll show you how to fix them because I have already helped thousands of people do it on their own. Let's dive in. Number one, not starting your day with enough protein. One of the biggest mistakes I see especially on people trying to lose weight or eat light, is skipping enough protein intake at breakfast. You start your day with toast and butter, maybe coffee and creamer, maybe a banana or juice, and then you run out of the door. And a couple hours later, your energy crashes, your cravings kick in, and your blood sugar looks like a roller coaster. Here's why protein matters and how to fix this issue. Protein actually blunts the blood sugar spike from carbohydrates. It boosts GLP-1, the same hormone that Asempic mimics, helping you feel fuller for longer. And most importantly, protein feeds your muscles. And as you already know, your muscles are glucose vacuums, so they need to be kept well fed. In fact, this randomized trial, a high protein breakfast induces greater insulin and glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide responses to a subsequent lunch meal in individuals with type 2 diabetes, which in simple words means that eating a high protein breakfast helps your body handle glucose better at your next meal, making it easier to keep your blood sugar levels as steady throughout the day. That study showed that eating between 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal leads to better blood sugar control, lean body mass, and ideal metabolic health. Now, enough protein intake is actually very dependent on your age, sex, height, weight, and activity levels. But aiming for 30 grams at breakfast is a great place to start. Think tofu scramble, protein-packed oats, smoothie with a plant-based protein powder, or a tofu breakfast burrito. If you eat eggs, no problem. Have one whole egg and two egg whites in your scramble. If you are about to run out of your house with a fruit and a bagel, at least pack a protein shake. I'll go ahead and link my favorite protein powder below this video. And I'll link a meal plan that you can also follow below this video. It's free, go grab it. Mistake number two, sitting after meals. You finish eating, you're full, you sit on the couch, or you go back to work in front of a computer. You may be at rest, but your blood sugar is ready to go to the stratosphere. Here's the deal. After you eat, your body wants to shuttle that glucose into your cells in order to convert it into energy. But if you're sedentary, especially after a large meal, your muscles aren't active and glucose lingers in your bloodstream for longer. A randomized crossover trial showed that walking for just 10 to 15 minutes after meals significantly reduced postprandial blood sugar spikes in people living with insulin resistance. So simply put, walking after meals should be a non-negotiable for you. Even a slow 10-minute stroll after lunch or dinner can reduce your blood sugar by up to 22%. If you have a treadmill at home or a stationary bike, same deal, it's going to work. Mistake number three, relying on saturated fat consumption. Even if you're on a low-carb diet, which we don't recommend. Let's clear up a major myth. It's not just added sugars that contribute to insulin resistance. It's also saturated fats. Saturated fat found in fatty cuts of meat, butter, cream, cheese, coconut oil gets stored inside of your muscle and liver cells. And that intracellular fat disrupts insulin signaling. 
Your pancreas is making insulin. It's knocking on the door of your cells, but your cells aren't answering because they are gummed up with fat. When this communication between insulin and the cell is disrupted, glucose doesn't go inside of your cells and it stays outside in the bloodstream, raising your blood sugar levels. A clinical trial in the journal Diabetologia found that a high saturated fat diet reduced insulin sensitivity by up to 40% in just five days, even when carbs were controlled, which means that both groups ate the same amount of carbohydrates. So the difference in blood sugar control came only from the type of fat that they ate. The name of the study is Substituting Dietary Saturated for Monounsaturated Fat impairs insulin sensitivity in healthy men and women. So shift your fat intake towards unsaturated fats like nuts, seeds, avocado, olive oil, and reduce animal-based saturated fats. I know that many people are thinking, but bacon doesn't raise my blood sugar levels. I know it doesn't. It's not about your acute blood sugar response. It's about the insulin resistance that saturated fats exacerbates. In other words, your cell's ability to respond to the signals of insulin decreases significantly, which leads to higher blood sugar levels in the long term, not immediately after eating it. This doesn't mean don't eat fat. It simply means eat the right kind of fat. Again, meal plans with a proper fat composition will be available for free below this video. Mistake number four, not snacking enough. And no, I'm not talking about food snacks. I'm talking about exercise snacks, tiny bursts of movement throughout the day, one to two minutes of air squats, stair climbs, wall sits, or resistance bands. A 2025 meta-analysis in Frontiers in Cardiovascular Medicine found that short bouts of exercise called exercise snacks done throughout the day improved significantly blood sugar levels, blood pressure, cholesterol, and overall health in adults compared to doing nothing. So why and how does this help blood sugar? Well, because even short bursts of movement activate something inside of your cells known as GLUT4 transporters. These are like tiny vesicles that usually hang out in the middle of the cell, but when you activate your muscle fibers, they translocate to the outermost layer of the cell, facilitating the diffusion of glucose into the cell and away from the bloodstream. I recommend that every 30 to 60 minutes of inactivity, get up and do one minute of movement, squats, push-ups, walking lunges, or resistance bands, anything that gets your muscles contracting. Download the free resistance bands exercise routine that I have made for you. The link is below this video, but please do it. It truly works. Mistake number five, bad snacking also known as calorie bombs in disguise. Now let's talk about actual food. You may think you're eating healthy, but a handful of trail mix here and there, some granola bars or a few cheese cubes, or especially those keto snacks that pack 300 calories, they add up. Most of these are high in calorie density, meaning lots of calories in a small volume of food, and especially low in fiber. That makes it easier to overeat, raise insulin levels, and promote fat gain, especially around the belly. Not due to the food itself, but due to the amount of calories that they contain. The fix is to choose low calorie density, high fiber snacks, such as berries with almond butter, carrot sticks and hummus, edamame with your favorite spices, roasted chickpeas again with your favorite spices, or a simple small protein shake. Mistake number six, not eating enough fiber with lunch and dinner. Fiber is like a secret weapon for blood sugar control. 
and most people aren't getting nearly enough. The latest statistics are showing that Americans are barely getting 10 grams of fiber per day. Want to know what is the recommended amount according to research for great blood sugar control? Closer to 35 grams per day. As a population, we are far away from that target. Soluble fiber slows digestion and it reduces the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream. It also feeds your gut microbiome, which plays a direct role in metabolic health. And fiber even helps improve insulin sensitivity. In fact, a recent meta-analysis from the Journal of Functional Foods found that increasing fiber intake significantly improves blood sugar levels and insulin sensitivity in people living with type 2 diabetes. With soluble fiber like oats, beans, and psyllium showing the strongest benefits. Let's make this easy. Aim for 10 grams of fiber per meal. This is actually quite simple to achieve if you focus on eating a diet that resembles the Mediterranean approach. I have linked a free meal plan for you below this video. And mistake number seven, poor sleep or not getting enough of it. This one is huge and is often overlooked. Just one poor night of sleep can decrease insulin sensitivity by up to 25% the following day. The subjects in this study slept for four to five hours per night instead of the recommended eight hours, which led to this significant decrease. So yes, it's a pretty large problem if you're not getting enough consistent sleep. Why is this even a big problem? Because poor sleep raises cortisol, your stress hormone, increases appetite via ghrelin and makes it harder for insulin to work properly. So here's what you can do to fix this. Take magnesium and ashwagandha one hour before bed. Also, power down all screens one hour before bed. Keep your room cool and dark. I personally like it at 67 degrees Fahrenheit and I wear an eye mask. And try five minutes of deep breathing before you close your eyes. I have linked the best ashwagandha and magnesium supplements that I take daily below this video. Simply take them one hour before bed and use this as your cue to start winding down, get off screens, and prepping your environment for a good night of sleep. So to recap, the seven daily mistakes destroying your blood sugar, you're skipping protein in the mornings. Start your day with 30 grams of protein to stabilize blood sugar levels throughout the day. You're sitting after meals, a slow 10 minute walk after meals can slash blood sugar levels by up to 22%. You are relying on saturated fats. Too much saturated fat consumption makes your cells insulin resistant. Opt for healthy fats like nuts, avocados, and seeds. You're not doing exercise snacks. Short bursts of movement throughout the day to activate your muscles and help them suck glucose from your bloodstream. You are choosing the wrong snacks. Avoid calorie-dense, low-fiber snacks. Choose high-fiber, low-calorie options like edamame, carrots and hummus, or berries and a nut butter. You are skimping on fiber at lunch and dinner. Fiber slows down glucose absorption and improves insulin sensitivity. Aim for 10 grams per meal. And seven, you're not getting enough quality sleep. Prioritize sleep like your life depends on it. Get help from relaxation supplements like magnesium and ashwagandha linked below this video. Most people are so focused on their cheat meals or high carb foods that they miss the everyday habits that are quietly destroying their blood sugar levels. Fix these seven things one at a time and you will start to see your fasting blood sugar levels drop your A1C improve, and your energy come back. Let me know in the comments below which one of these surprised you the most and which one you're going to fix starting today. If this video helped you, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.